Hello, here is an essay question. And here is a model answer. But all of the linking expressions have been removed. Oh no, that is terrible. My name is Toby, this is Smash English, and here is everything you need to know about linking words and expressions to write the perfect essay for the B2 First Cambridge exam. The introduction. Here is our fabulous introduction. And in our introduction, we have contrast. Wow! Contrast! We have our opening statement, which is a general sentence about the topic, but then we introduce a question that seems to contradict it. Huh, how exciting! What words can we use here? Remember, we are starting a sentence, and this clause contains some very important information. Our question. Well, if we are starting a sentence, and the content of this sentence contradicts or contrasts with what we said before, we can say nonetheless or nevertheless. Wow! Brilliant! Toby is a fantastic man, and incredibly intelligent and attractive. Nevertheless, he is single, sad, and lonely. So, subscribe, and make me feel valued. We can also use however here. Some people say that we cannot use however to start a sentence. And if you hear somebody say this, then slap them with your hand, like this. No, please don't do that. That is a terrible idea. No, don't do that, okay? No, but using however to start a sentence is fine. Seriously, it's fine. Do it. Paragraph two. Now we have our first body paragraph, so we need to introduce our first idea. To do this, we could say firstly, first of all, to start with, in the first place, or first and foremost. However, oh, no slaps for me. <laughs> first and foremost suggests that your first idea is your most important idea. So if your first idea is not your most important idea, don't say first and foremost. Instead say firstly, first of all, to start with or in the first place. Mm. So we have introduced the idea that life is not gender segregated, and then we have discussed the consequence that gender-segregated schooling may not prepare children for later life. So how can we introduce this consequence? We can say, because of this. Some people say that you cannot start a sentence with because. And I say, slap these people. With your words, not with your hands. God, you are so violent. Calm down. Jesus. We can also say, owing to this, as a result of this, as a consequence, consequently, therefore, or so. Remember, we are starting a sentence, so after you use these, you must use a comma. Please, remember your commas, because we love Commas. Comma, 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 chameleon. <laughs> ah, I also say due to this to talk about consequences. But some people say that you cannot start a sentence with due to this. <laughs> now we have a zero conditional. Something that is always true, and I know you think you know the zero conditional, but you don't. I keep telling people that they don't know it, and then they tell me they do know it, I test them, and they fail, because I make it really hard to prove a point. So watch this video, all about it. It's great. Bye. No, don't go. I'm, st I'm still talking. Now, of course, we can be very boring and say if. But there are other possibilities that sometimes change the meaning, but if you can use them and use them correctly, 
Wow! <laughs> Someone is going to get very high marks. And that's not a terrible thing. We can say provided that. And this is a more formal way of saying if. It means on the condition that, which is the definition of if. Mm. Or, and this is very special, we can say insofar as. And this means to the extent that, or to the degree that. Honestly, if the examiners see you doing this, then <laughs> they will slap themselves, like I just did now. So for contrast, we have nonetheless, nevertheless, and however. For sequence, we have firstly, first of all, to start with in the first place and first and foremost. For consequence, we have owing to this, as a result, as a consequence, consequently, therefore, so, and due to this. And for conditions, we have if, provided that, and insofar as. Paragraph 3. Now we are introducing our third paragraph and our second main idea. So we could say, secondly, but the examiners know that we can count. So let's not do that. Instead, we could say, moreover, furthermore, on top of that, what is more, and in addition. Great. Remember, after each one, we need a comma. We're starting a sentence. Comma, 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 chameleon. And now we want to add emphasis. Emphasis. Oh, Jesus. Um, our next sentence is expanding on the point of the previous sentence. And we want to emphasize this. And to do this, we can say certainly, indeed, without a doubt, as a matter of fact, and in fact. And again, remember, we need commas after these. We can also say undoubtedly, and I love this word. We put this word after the subject. So here, that would be, most children undoubtedly make the majority of their friends at school. <laughs> Brilliant. Doesn't that look great? I think it looks great. Try using it. <laughs> Good luck. And now we have another consequence. So we can say, owing to this, due to this, because of this, consequently, as a consequence, therefore, and so, but I have a bonus consequence for you. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm so ready. We can say, in light of this. Right. Wow. Beautiful. Poetry. Wow. In light of what I have just told you, you are going to use in light of in every essay you ever write from now on. Yes? Yes! So for additions, we have added secondly, moreover, furthermore, in addition, what is more, and on top of that. For emphasis, we have indeed, certainly, in fact, without a doubt, as a matter of fact, and undoubtedly. And for consequence, we have added in light of this. Paragraph 4. To start this next paragraph, we are going to contrast it with paragraphs 2 and 3, the two paragraphs that preceded it. This is because it is presenting a prompt and an idea that disagrees with the viewpoints of those previous two paragraphs. Last time we contrasted, we used nonetheless or nevertheless, or however. But we cannot do that here. Why not? Because we have an object, the above. And because we have an object, we only have two options. Despite and in spite of. After despite and in spite of, we need either an object or a gerund, an ing form. Despite being incredibly attractive, Toby is a sad, lonely man. So here we can say despite the above or in spite of the above, but we cannot say despite of the above. Seriously, do not do that. In spite of or despite. 
Not despite of. Do not say despite of. Students, all the time, say despite of. And when they do that, do you know what I want to do? I want to slap. No, I, I don't want to slap them. I want to say, hi, let's do some more studying together. This is so much fun. I love teaching you. Next, we need to express purpose. We have said that mixed sex interactions may be better outside of the classroom. And the first clause of this sentence expresses the purpose of this. What is the point? What is the purpose? Oh. To express purpose, we can be really boring and just say two infinitives of purpose. Yeah. Or we can make things a little bit more formal and say in order to, which is just a more formal way of saying Two. Oh, hello, Toby. Why do you shower in order to be clean? Great example. What am I doing? We can also say as a means to, and this is also exactly the same. And lastly, why not try saying with the aim of? Remember that of is a preposition, so we must follow it with the gerund. So here we should say, with the aim of better focusing students on their formal education. But that's not difficult, is it? You can do that. If I can do it, you can do it. Probably. Now we are giving an example. We are giving an example of how schools could organise mixed sex interactions outside of the classroom. To introduce examples, we can say, for example, for instance, to provide an illustration or to illustrate. So now for contrast, we also have despite and in spite of. For purpose, we have to, in order to, as a means to, and with the aim of. And for examples, we have, for example, to illustrate, for instance, and to provide an example. The conclusion. And we are sequencing again, but we are sequencing for the last time, because this is our conclusion. So how can we conclude an essay? We can say summing up, to conclude, in conclusion, on balance, and all things considered. I mean, that's five. That's five possibilities here. But you can only write one conclusion. Seriously, if in your essay, you write more than one conclusion, then I, I don't think I can help you. Well, <laughs> joking, I can. Watch this video here about how to structure every essay you ever write for the B2 first exam. Seriously, it's brilliant. Why are you watching this video now when you could be watching this one? Go, no, don't go. Watch all of this one till the end, then watch it again, and then watch that one. That's the order, the order of life. Natural selection, science, evolution. And now we have another contrast. Another contrast. Another contrast. But we have a problem. Here we cannot say nonetheless, nevertheless, however, in spite of or despite. No. And there are two reasons for this. Number one, the important information is not contained in the clause with the contrast. Without mixed gender classes, students are less prepared for the future. Number two, we cannot say despite or in spite of because it is a subject, not an object. And after using despite or in spite of, we need an object or a gerund, not a subject. No, but don't worry guys, because we have lots of options. <laughs> we could say although, even though, though, or while. Brilliant. And finally, we need one more consequence. So we could say owing to this, due to this, as a result of this, consequently, as a consequence, so, therefore, or in light of this. Wow, that is a lot of consequences. <sighs> so finally, here are all of our linking words and expressions. 
Ta-da! Oh, look at them. Just look at them. They look great. Yeah. Oof, I am exhausted. Now you know every single linking word and expression that you need to know to write the perfect essay for the B2 First Cambridge exam. If you liked the video, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment down below. My name is Toby and this was Smash English. Mm -hmm.